So for several years now, the tier list has been the weapon of choice for many a fitness influencer to convey information, to drop some knowledge bombs, taking information from their brain and putting it into yours. However, to me, there always seemed to be something a little bit lacking. There needed to be some way to rank these tier lists, to put them in some kind of order so that you could put them in the appropriate place. And thus, I give you the tier list, tier list, a tier list of tier lists. Yeah, you guys thought I was joking when I posted that on Instagram on a story. Nope, nope, it's a real thing. It's happening. I made notes and did research and all, all that good stuff. So we're going to start with a big name, starting out with Jeff Nippert's tier list. He's ranked chest exercises, back exercises, triceps exercises, and more. And I think on the whole, he nails things. If you look at the big picture, which movements are going to do well, which movements are not going to do well, I think he gets the job done here. I also think his production value is absolutely on point. You can tell he puts a lot of time and energy and effort into every single video, and he's choosing exercises that are commonly performed, and thus you can steer clear of ones that maybe are popular but not as good. But he also has some hidden gems where they are actually quite underrated and you might not see them as often. I do think that a lot of this is sort of his personal preference. For example, one of his categories is, does it feel good? Does it feel smooth? I think this is, to a certain extent, going to be individual. And so keep in mind that just because it doesn't feel good for him, doesn't mean it won't feel good for you, and vice versa. So it is sort of ranked by science. That's in the title. I think that is sort of, to a certain extent, just to get the click-through rate up a little bit uh, and realize that a lot of this is going to be going by feel, and it's a little bit bro science -y to a certain extent, which I don't think is a bad thing. And there are a few minor things where I would put it a little bit higher or a little bit lower, but on the whole, I think he nails it, and this is a solid S-tier pick, in my opinion. All right, next up, we have Eric Bugenhagen's reaction to Jeff Nippert's tier list. Now, normally, I don't really like reaction content. I think it's often just lazy. I think it's an easy way to get clicks and views without having to really create something on your own, which is where the lion's share of the time and effort and energy goes. But these are entertaining as hell. I'm not going to lie. That's not doing shit. That's some pencil neck shit. Freeze. So well, I'm tempted to put them in A tier. I'm going to be lenient and put them in S tier as well. That's S tier! That's S tier! There is sort of a clash between Jeff Nippert's more sciencey approach but then also Eric Bugenhagen's very bro sciency approach. But then Jeff also has a little bit of a bro sciency streak at times, and so there's some agreement, there's some disagreement. If this was anything but S tier, this video would just be the absolute just blasphemy of all things bulbous. I'm gonna hesitantly drop it back. Oh, best! Eric is just entertaining. So this is, it, it. they're long. He just films them on his TV behind him. He doesn't have YouTube Red or whatever, so there's commercials going on, and it's him yelling, and he has to rush before his family gets home and stuff, and it's just a fucking good time. However, again, it's a reaction, so I'm going to put this in A tier. Still very good, very entertaining, worth a watch, but I can't put a reaction in S tier. It's just not going to happen, so A tier. Next up, we have a young gentleman named Denali Gordon. Now, I was not familiar with him before researching this video and by researching i mean typing into the youtube search bar fitness tier lists and then scrolling down yeah i'm a professional here i did notice a few things first he has mostly shorts i think shorts are okay i don't really do them not my cup of tea at least not for now and tier lists they're okay so shorts fine tier list fine but doing a shorts tier list to me that just seems really rushed and like you're not really conveying enough information to have value here. And I think this is really just for, for clicks. He also was very, very excitable. Like, oh, you need to do this. Blah, blah, blah. Like this kind of TikTok Mr. Beast appealing to teenagers or younger kind of content. To me, it's not my cup of tea. It was really not very informative by and large. A lot of not particularly useful content here. D tier. All right, next up, we have a very recent video posted just yesterday. It's a good thing I didn't film this earlier procrastination pays from dr milo wolf i ranked every youtube fitness channel worst to best so first of all i'm an a tier and i'm actually okay with that he's a science-based creator i'm not really a science-based creator i keep up with things but i don't use it particularly actively in my videos in a lot of cases 
So for me to go in A tier, I think is perfectly reasonable. However, there were a few other things which maybe got people a little upset. Dr. Mike was actually in A tier. Some people might think this is rage bait, but I actually completely agree. A few years ago, Dr. Mike would have been probably near the top of S tier. But recently, it's been more clickbait. He's had a lot of dogmatic takes, not a lot of nuance, saying some really outlandish stuff. I think A tier is actually a pretty good fit for where he is now. And I hope he doesn't continue down the path to going towards B, C, D, F. Even more egregiously, Greg Doucette was ranked above natural hypertrophy, which is a pretty wild take in my opinion. Uh, and so I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put this tier list in B tier. I think it was good overall. I understand his picks, but some of them I really think missed the mark. And so I think B tier is a pretty generous gift there. Next up, we have Talon Fitness. He makes mostly nutrition videos. So he has tier lists on like the types of cheese, which sounds ridiculous and stupid. And he's not the most entertaining person out there, I would say. But the information is excellent. It's clearly very well researched. He absolutely knows his stuff. And while it can be a little bit repetitive at times, like this cheese is rich in this vitamin and this cheese has this much and this vegetable and it can get a little bit repetitive and boring, but I think this is quite unique in that I've never really seen any other nutrition tier lists. They are very popular for a reason, and I think I'm going to put him in B tier. So very, very good. I watch them regularly, but it's missing a little bit of spice to put them higher, at least in my book. Next up, we have Trainer Winnie. Now, this was another guy that I was not super familiar with before researching this video, and I was pleasantly surprised. He has this sort of cartoony thing where it's animated. I'm usually not a huge fan of that kind of content. I would rather just sort of listen to someone speak and see their face, and I think it's a better way to convey information overall. But it's very, very popular, and I think his information is overall good. There were a few times when it was not quite as detailed as I would want. But then again, as an advanced lifter, I realized that the details matter more for me compared to the beginners that he is likely targeting. So he said something like, let's just rank all the pulldowns together. I kind of died inside a little bit there. I'm like, no, like they're actually quite a bit different. Like You got to sort of go into these details. Um, but then again, for the average beginner, just grab a bar and pull down and it's going to work pretty much everything and you're going to get more jacked than you were. So I think for the audience that he is going for, I think it makes sense. He referenced science, I think, but he also said, hey, the studies are not everything. You have to go in there. You have to go by feel. And I really appreciate it when people who are targeting beginners say that because it kind of gets rid of the paralysis by overanalysis type of thing that is just so, so common in beginners and just urging people to get in there and like do anything in these tiers. It's going to be good. Work hard, progressively overload, etc. I think that is a very good message overall. And so I am going to put him in, I'm going to put him in A tier. I wrote B tier here, but I, I think he deserves an A tier ranking. By the way, this video is sponsored by Boost Camp. So they are the best way to log, track, and manage your training. You should be tracking your training. If you are not, you are probably leaving long-term gains on the table. It would be nice to think that we could just go in and do whatever we felt like doing that day, but you gotta have a plan and you gotta have a way to track that plan over time. You might say, oh, I don't have a plan. Well, Boost Camp has a bunch of fixed plans that you can hop on as well. I myself have three plans on the app. Rampage, Ravage, and the Recovering Power Lifter program. So you can select any of those, whichever fits your schedule, and start making those gains today. Once again, thank you to Boost Camp for sponsoring this video. All right, next up we have Greg Doucette. Now, tier lists are just personal preference for the most part, and there really are no objective criteria for this tier list. So I'm going to put him in F tier, and you might say, oh, that's petty. And to that, all I have to say is, yeah. All right, next up we have Bald Omni Man. Now, one thing I really like about his stuff is that it's not super edited. You can tell that he's not planning everything out word by word or scripting it, but it's still really polished. It's still really well put together. And I think this is just a testament to him knowing a lot and having delved deep into exercise selection. Some of his tier lists are a little bit on the niche side, where it's like the best dip accessories, which most people would not even think of, like the best 
I thought accessory. I thought the dip was an accessory to the bench. Something is accessorizing your dip. Like that's another that's another level of inception. Um, but he has it for the squad. He has it for the bench. He has it for which muscle groups make you look jacked. He has a bunch of different tier lists. Also, every year he comes out with an hour plus long behemoth of a video ranking a whole bunch of exercises. So we're talking 40, 50, 60 plus movements, all S through F tier like you would in, in any other tier list. But I think these are really, really on point. I've learned a lot from him. And so he goes solidly in the S tier. All right, now we have Connor Sinan. Now I was not familiar with this guy either, but he's another one who does shorts plus tier lists. And I think it's just not enough time to convey information to make this medium worthwhile. I think one of the main benefits of having a tier list is that you can go into at least a decent amount of detail on everything that you are listing. It's not just, oh, dips, A tier, bench press, S tier, oh, cable crossover, B tier. To me, that is kind of a waste of time because you want to explain to everyone why you are picking that. And if you only have 60 seconds or less, or eight seconds if it's on TikTok, well, I just don't think it's a worthwhile medium, and I don't think you're really doing the viewer a service. If anything, it's a disservice, because they feel like they've learned something when they really haven't. So, D tier, again. Next up, we have Revival Fitness. Yeah, showed up in my search feed, and I still think he's generally a good source of information, I think maybe he's a little bit too black -billed. I think maybe he spends a little bit too much time on Reddit, Natty or Juice, where the standards just get dragged into oblivion, and anyone with a biceps vein is obviously not natural. Anyone with an FFMI above a certain amount, or anyone who looks better than the Silver Era guys at all in any circumstances, even under the perfect lighting, is obviously taking a whole bunch of stuff. So, despite his accusations of yours truly taking Listeroids, um, I think his information is still generally pretty damn good. I think his results are not too surprising. He's clearly been consistent and has worked hard. And so I'm going to put him in the B tier. Next up, we have Calisthenics Movement, also known as Cali Move. I watched a lot of their stuff during the pandemic when I didn't have access to a gym. Lots of really, really good information. Production value, absolutely on point. It's clear that a ton of work and planning and preparation goes into their videos. And so I would be remiss if I put them any lower than A tier. So I'm going to put them in the A tier. Really good source of information. Maybe not as purely hypertrophy, hypertrophically focused as I am. But I think overall, especially if you're getting into calisthenics, really good source. All right, next up we have Simple D Fitness. And this is another guy who just showed up in search. I wasn't familiar with him. Apparently he just showed up a year and a half ago started absolutely crushing it, getting hundreds of thousands of views, and then his last video was nine months ago. So he showed up, was killing it, and then just peaced out. So he's losing points for consistency if I was even counting points at all. But he, if, if it was a category, he would, you know, not be doing great there. There were a few things that caught my eye. First, it's this sort of hyper-edited style where everything is moving and transitioning, and you're not sure if it's made by AI because... Every time they say something, something has to appear. Every three seconds, there has to be a transition. I'm not a huge fan of that. I don't really need that to stimulate my attention personally. And it kind of makes me like, it's a little bit off-putting personally. But again, a lot of teenagers sort of need that by now because they've spent too much time on other platforms where it's just hyper-stimulatory. So I'm not a fan of that, but I understand it. The next would be using EMG to say this exercise is better than this one. I don't think it's really a great metric to use, and the fitness industry seems to sort of be getting away from that. So I don't think that's really worth using. Another one was in his supplement tier list using the top tier as Tren, which I don't think is a great thing either. You should never joke about Tren. I've definitely joked about Tren, but you should not really because I think people watching it might not realize how bad it is and then start using it without realizing that it's not a joke, it's actually really pretty fucking awful for you. So overall, I'm gonna put him in C tier, but if he makes a return, then who knows, could be B, A, S tier. For someone so new to the game, definitely shows promise. Next up, we have Basement Bodybuilding's reaction to Jeff Nippert's tier list. Jeff Nippert. So hot right now. 
And kind of similar to Bugenhagen's reaction, uh, I don't think I can put this in S tier just in good conscience. I don't think we should reward reaction content excessively. A little bit is okay. I think he adds more information than Bugenhagen, but Bugenhagen is significantly more entertaining. They're a little bit longer than Bugenhagen's on average. And overall, I think he does a good job. I think he can be a little bit harsh at times, uh, maybe excessively harsh. I mean, there were a few instances where Baseman said that, oh, Jeff doesn't know this. But then a minute or two later, or even a few seconds later, Jeff said that exact same thing. And so this is sort of the problem with reaction content. You're not getting the full picture. You're not really seeing the whole video. And sometimes... And sometimes when you're making content, you can't describe every last detail, especially when you have a really, really big audience like Jeff Nipper does. And so I thought he was maybe a little bit excessively harsh, but he also raised a number of good points where maybe some of the sciencey things don't matter quite as much. Um, I thought a lot of the details regarding strength curves were actually very helpful. And so overall, I think he did a good job, maybe a little bit harsh at times, uh, but still... I'm going to put him in A tier as well. All right, next up, we have Natural Hypertrophy. Now, he has tier lists on just about every muscle group by now. One thing that I really like is that his tier lists don't have tiers of just S, A, B, C, D. Anyone who does that is, is just lame and unimaginative. No, he actually describes all of the tiers. Uh, for example, shoulders go from boulder tier down to pebble tier. Legs, hamstrings, exercises goes from horse tier down to polio tier. You're gonna cancel, bro. You're gonna, you gotta, you're gonna come on. Ooh, that is edgy. But I think on the whole, his recommendations are very reasonable. I don't think he's coached a ton of people, but it's clear that he's not going only based off of his own experiences. Yes, that is gonna be the primary determinant, personal preference, but it's clear that he's also talked to a whole bunch of lifters. He's kept up with lifting culture more than just about anyone. Uh, and so keeping his ear to the ground ensures that his recommendations are broadly and generally applicable to the average viewer. And it's rare that I see him rate something that is not about where I would rate it. I would say incline dumbbell curls was the only one where I was like, hmm, yeah, I disagree. But all in all, a solid S tier pick. Next up, we have Alexander Bromley. Now, one thing that I like is that he it is not just doing hypertrophy-focused content, but he is strength-focused as well. Furthermore, he is actually rating and ranking programs as well, which a lot of people aren't really doing. It's just sort of chest, back, calves. Well, not calves. No one gives a shit about calves. But they're just going by muscle group or body part or maybe movement pattern. But him ranking programs, I think, is pretty cool as well. Actually, Revival Fitness did that as well, which I think is another level of thought than just which exercise is good or bad or okay. He's ranked bars, cambered bars, safety squat bars, etc., which is pretty cool. It's a sort of a, a unique idea. I haven't seen anyone else do that, so that's pretty cool. I would like to see him do more hypertrophy content. I think that would be awesome. He's going into a bodybuilding arc. I think he's going into a bodybuilding arc, and so I'm going to put him in A tier, but I think once he goes into the muscle groups a little bit more, he'll have a solid S tier rating. So I'm awaiting that. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, next up we have this tier list. Well, I mean, seems okay. Uh, you're still watching, so it can't, can't, can't be that bad, right? However, he doesn't really seem to have any objective criteria. It seems to be mostly personal preference. There might even be a little bit of favoritism going on. The people he knows get a little bit higher ranking. That's a little bit suspect. The beard seems a little bit uneven. Um, I don't know what it is about this guy. I mean, I don't want to... Normally, I'm very aware of punching down and cyberbullying, but this guy just gets under my skin, man. I don't know why, but... Feel free to leave a nasty comment. Normally, I don't direct people to other people's pages, but, you know, have at it. This guy deserves it. What a loser. <laughs> anyway, there you have it. The tier list, tier list, a tier list of tier lists. And let's get this going. I want to hear other people's tier lists of tier lists. And once we get a few of these going, maybe half a dozen or a dozen or so, you can make a tier list of the tier list, tier lists, and ultimately... That is just peak YouTube content, isn't it? No! 
Anyway, for more actual fitness information, you can check out my books. They will serve you well. They will have all the information that you need to get just a little bit more jacked. They've been very, very highly reviewed. Appreciate everyone who has gotten copies of those. Thanks so much for the support. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.